All right, this is chapter 8, which we could think of as basically part 2 to chapter 7, where we're going to go in a little more depth about the economic growth model. We're just going to keep developing the solar growth model that we developed in chapter 7. So I'll give you a brief overview. Um, lecture 1, overview. Very exciting. Section Lecture 2, we're going to talk about adding in technological progress. So it's a, we're basically going to pull a trick. We're going to do a mathematical trick that allows us to model um, increasing um, uh, increasing technology within our um, model. In lecture number three, we're going to start looking at empirics. We want to know, does the gro solo growth model actually meet the data? Uh, uh, four, we're going to talk a little bit about policy. And then five, five we're going to round up. We're going to talk a little bit about a little more modern theory. So the solo growth model that we've gone through so far gets us state-of-the-art circa 1950, 1960. Um, if we want to come for, farther forward into kind of more modern theory, it's this endogenous growth theory. And we're going to talk about that just a little bit. But we aren't going to go into any real detail about endogenous growth theory. So let's take just a brief second to, do, to introduce the material for Chapter 8. And well, what's different? So in Chapter 7, we held the production technology constant and therefore income per capita is constant in the steady state. Remember that. Okay, so that is a, that's a, um, just a prediction of the solo growth model. What's income per worker? All right, output per worker. Well, steady state output per worker is what? Well, constant. So, well, because it's in steady state. Well, but there's a problem with that. First of all, output per worker or income per worker in the United States grows over time. Uh, so basically we've seen a 7.8 times increase in output per worker over the 100 years from 1908 to 2008, which equates to about 2% per year. That's not zero. So we've got a problem here that the model from Chapter 7 isn't quite enough to describe the data in the United States. And well, one of the reasons for that, we're assuming Technology is constant, but, well, technology obviously isn't constant. I mean, think about farming. In 1908, how did we farm? We, far we, had, we still had a lot of farming going on that was being done with animals. So oxen, um, you know, horses, drawing a plow, you know, small farms. Today, what do we have? Gigantic tractors plowing fields. So major technological changes has happened over that time period huge amounts of technological change. Maybe more technological change over that hundred years than in all the time previous um, in human history. So, well, to hold technology constant is kind of stupid. So, that's what Chapter 8 is all about, is figuring out how to not hold technology constant. So, we can look at some uh, examples of productivity changes or technological progress. Obviously, farming, um, computing power. If you think about it, uh, there's this really cool um, piece of equi computer equipment. I know you have to be kind of a geek to get a kick out of this, but um, so there's this this thing called a GPU. It's a graphical processing unit. If you're a if you're a video gamer, you know what I'm talking about. But essentially, what it is is it's this array of processors. It's just it's called highly parallelized processing. So you might have this um, GPU that has a thousand little central processing units on it. Okay, and what it does is they can calculate all kinds of things simultaneously. So if you can split a job up into lots of little jobs, you can do them all at once, and so it gets done faster. And so for about $3,500 on um, Tiger Direct, you can get this Tesla GPU, which is actually not made for gaming at all. Um, it's way overkill for any kind of video game you want to play. It's actually made for computational computing. So high, high-end computational or scientific computing. Um, for about $3,500, you can buy this Tesla GPU that has a teraflop of computing power output. Now, I don't, or I'm sorry, no, not a teraflop, three and a half teraflops. All right, so we're talking about a thousand bucks a teraflop. I have absolutely no idea how, how fast a teraflop is. I know it's really bloody fast. Um, it's something like a trillion operations per second or more than that. I don't know what it is, but I do know this, that three and a half teraflops is probably more computing power than existed on planet Earth in 1980. And you can buy it for 3500 bucks. That is really, really wicked cool. 
Um, this is this is just technological progress. Um, you know, the internet, obviously. Oh, good, we've got iPods. I mean, this is a little bit out of. As we see, technological progress is is, go, is ongoing. So we better figure out how to handle that, and that's what we're doing in this chapter.